Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Aaron Dykes. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, April 5th, 2012. Coming up tonight, we have Sheriff Richard Mack to discuss the ongoing attacks against the Second Amendment, his new book, The Magic of Gun Control, and a whole lot more. He'll join us later, and we'll take a glimpse into just a few of the entries for our Become an InfoWars Reporter Contest. That's all coming up. Stay tuned. But first, the news. Uh, the moves for authoritarian control by the global warming globalists are becoming more transparent by the day. We have ongoing fallout over Professor Norgard, who recently released her paper and attended this conference saying that global warming deniers, climate change deniers should be, quote, treated. Uh, that presumably refers to some kind of drugged treatment. And uh, so we've had everything in the fallout of that from banning our videos on YouTube. You heard Alex uh, ranting about that yesterday on this show, today on the radio show, uh, to attacking people like Rush Limbaugh and anyone else who isn't willing to tow this uh, climate change line, which they admit is just for larger global control. Now they're scrubbing much of Professor Norgard's work, uh, deleting her papers. They're revising it, taking out that key word, treat. Uh, the deniers. And so now we have uncovered how Professor Norgard urged Obama to, quote, ignore democracy and public opinion, and how she also endorsed none other than John P. Holdren, chief eco-science eugenicist in the White House uh, and science advisor to the president, the climate change professor at the center of the latest scandal over her assertion that global warming skeptics were akin to racists and should be, quote, treated for having psychiatric disorder, wrote in a letter in which she praised Obama for hiring eugenicist John P. Holdren as his chief science advisor while urging Obama to ignore public opinion and disregard democracy and in favor of endorsing Draco climate change mandates. And we have her actual paper there. You could see the quotes. Uh, she does say that while democracy is a nice concept, uh, things are too dire with climate change and we just have to do what must be done. And it's no wonder she praises John P. Holdren because in Ecoscience and in all his other writings for 30 plus years, uh, he says the very same thing, that to enforce the global society they want to set up, to enforce the population reduction, uh, the uh, mandatory population reduction. They will need a planetary regime. It's all in eco-science. We've covered the quotes at length. And here you have other people down the chain, like Professor Norgard, regurgitating those calls for just absolute authoritarianism. And of course, they all admit it's to build a global government. You've seen the new video as well, uh, calling this the Anthropocene age, the age of man uh, changing earth. Of course, the Greenies uh, made this video where they kind of spoof the idea of blowing up by pushing a red button, the unbelievers and those who weren't willing to commit to reducing their, quote, carbon footprint, to becoming more green. And all this is just coming undone as we see in more and more, they just want to take over society and also have an excuse to kill. Uh, another form of authoritarianism coming into view, oh, the IRS, new bill would suspend passport rights for delinquent taxpayers, another method of cracking down on travel, uh, trying to restrict that as a known right, trying to sell travel as a privilege, trying to sell the idea that you have to get groped or radiated at the airport just to go somewhere. Uh, so this new bill is from Senator Barbara Boxer, someone familiar to the avenues and halls of tyranny. She's introduced Senate Bill 1813 to reauthorize federal aid highway and highway safety construction programs and for other purposes. And of course, bearing, buried in there is moving ahead for progress in the 21st Century Act, or MAP 21, which would allow the revocation or denial of a passport uh, for anyone with unpaid taxes or tax delinquencies, uh, but not if you're a member of the Obama administration, whether you're Geithner uh, or whether you're the dozen or so others who are known tax cheats. Anyway, the BBC News reports that Chinese websites were defaced by Anonymous in an attack uh, that was clearly in retaliation to the uh, shutdown of a number of websites over the supposed internet coup that happened in China. Almost 500 websites defaced by the Anonymous sock puppet, puppet 
group. Uh, no way to really know who's behind that. Could be white hats, could be people in other government factions, could be ways to kind of corner China in the larger geopolitical struggle. But it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, Anonymous urged people to stage their own protests against the Chinese regime and uh, put a message on the site that read in part, Dear Chinese government, you're not infallible. Today, websites are hacked. Tomorrow, it will be your vile regime that will fall. Now, we know about the infiltration of spies in the U.S. government, of course, and many other governments as well. Over the years, it's classically part of the Cold War, the Soviet infiltration, and, of course, the globalists in our own government who traded secrets. One of the big cases there came out of the secret society at Cambridge, the Cambridge Apostles, the same secret society Aldous Huxley and Lord Bertrand Russell were members of. You had Kim Philby there, the MI6 intelligence extraordinaire, and five other people accused of handing spy secrets to Russia. That was back then. You've also got the Chinese uh, who admittedly traded for top secret information on nuclear and other materials with the Clinton administration. You've got the Israeli spy ring penetration that was exposed in part after 9-11. Well, now the Russians are back. Uh, it's been exposed since 2010 that indeed a spy ring from Russia uh, got well within the Obama administration at the highest levels. And even Vladimir Putin went on Larry King Live at the time and uh, admitted this was going on, but basically said, it's no big deal. Yeah, we were up in your stuff, but it's not that important. We weren't going to do anything. It was kind of just a just a case backup plan. Anyway, we put together a package on that, laying out the depths of what may well be an emerging new Cold War as geopolitical tensions with Russia are ongoing. Don't forget, they have menaced Russia over and over and threatened to start World War III, and it's hardly over yet. Let's go to that package right now. A spy ring has once again infiltrated the highest and most secure levels of our government. Anna Chapman was revealed in 2010 to be a Russian spy. But only now do we know that the FBI agents exposed her because they feared she was getting dangerously close and under the covers with a high-ranking Obama official. But they would not reveal who the official was. However, it later emerged that not the bombshell Anna Chapman, but another member of the Russian spy ring, had reached the inner circle of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's entourage. Foreign spies were admittedly involved deep inside the inner workings of U.S. foreign policy. Putin played it down and said they were doing no harm. But is it a sign that a new Cold War is emerging? Or are we trapped in some kind of James Bond film? Tabloids even speculated why Hillary started dressing like a Bond villain. And now KGB boss Vladimir Putin, back in power, recently unveiled a new psychotronic weapon that attacks the central nervous system and turns humans into zombies. Putin said that such high-tech weapons systems will be comparable in effect to nuclear weapons, but will be more acceptable in terms of political and military ideology. And Russian Defense Minister Anatoly Sertikov added, The development of weaponary systems based on new physics principles, direct energy weapons, geophysical weapons, wave energy weapons, genetic weapons, psychotronic weapons, and so on, is part of the state arms procurement program for 2011 to 2020. We know that similar technology has already been tapped by DARPA. It was revealed in the wake of the Arab Spring and the contested Russian election that the U.S. had indeed intervened to tie Putin's hands on the grand chessboard. The conflict in South Ossetia, pitting Western-backed Georgia against Russia, later proved to be an attempt by Vice President Dick Cheney to menace Russia into World War III, putting us once again on the brink. Zygmunt Brzezinski, key advisor under President Carter and shadow advisor under alleged President Obama, has long envisioned the plan to encircle Russia and compete for territory in the great game. And so what a fascinating package. All the uh, crazy stuff going on between the Russian and U.S. governments, all the clear 
behind the scenes collaboration and and what really are they building up to? And of course, did the sexy spy Anna Chapman get inside the Obama administration? Did she know too much? Did she get too close to the official? Or was it Cynthia Murphy, Murphy so close to Hillary Clinton? Uh, did Hillary know who she was already and cooperate with her anyway? Or was this an exposure of even more vital uh, national intelligence? Of course, it's the globalists at the CFR, at the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg level that includes Hillary and many others who are already uh, so much of a threat to this country, but getting Russia involved is even crazier. But getting back into the globalist authoritarian regime under the guise of saving the environment, under the guise of leading society in this rational way, we have 83-year-old woman denied health care over her carbon footprint. And here we have the perfect mix of that case for killing granny with the death panels meeting the global warming alarmism in the Paul Joseph Watson article as 83-year-old Avril Mulhani complained about a doctor and was then told that the practice had a problem with her green traveling issues and ordered her to re-register with another practice. The only problem was her travel route was only two miles. So how does that uh, amount to a green carbon footprint issue. Well, it's really just if you complain about your doctor or the service or any in any way or the socialist Medicare system you're under, then you're going to be punished while the system targets people for their age, for their disabilities, for the projected costs of caring for them and decides your life just isn't worth it. And besides with this larger carbon problem, really no one's life is worth it. So everyone look out and it's just more of a sign of the times. Boy, those people really got it right who did the spoof of Planned Grant Parenthood. You really see where this thing is going. First, they sold us on Planned Parenthood. Now, they sell us on killing babies up to age three, and then now it's death panels and how we have to get rid of grannies and how it's not worth it to care for them because they have to travel two miles to the doctor's office. That's in the UK, and unfortunately, it appears to be headed for the US if they don't overturn Obamacare. Meanwhile, a genetically modified stuff is just running rampant, going crazy. We've got the natural news report from writer Jonathan Benson. Medical madness. Researchers develop genetically engineered farm goats. That's farm with a PH as in pharmaceuticals that produce vaccines and milk. Of course, this isn't the first time you've heard of this. If you've been following InfoWars, they also have pharmaceutical GMO crops they're developing and a whole lot more. And so instead of backing off of vaccines when they're proved dangerous or backing off of GMO organisms when they're proved dangerous and that they're causing long-term sterility, third-generation sterility, organ failure, deformed babies, and more, let's combine the two. Let's amplify it. Let's magnitude. Let's magnify it. Let's fortify research and fund for GMOs for these vaccine crops, all while ignoring the fact that natural raw milk from mammals, including goats, cows, and more, have very good immunity properties already built into them. They don't even need to mess with goats. They already produce a great product that humans can benefit from directly, as well as the other mammals involved. But no, they want to rewrite the genetic code, make sure they have a patent over life, and try to control you through it, and try to force you to take this junk. Well, uh, consumers may not be taking it. There has been a major victory, and I agree with some of the commenters, uh, the GMO overlords will probably still try to get this stuff on the market, sneak it in in various ways, but a major victory in Canada coming out this week as consumer rejection kills the GM Enviropig as farmers feared pork market collapse. Now, you've got the Canadian organization Ontario Pork, you've got the University of Guelph and other entities who really designed this Enviropig. Uh, they were going to modify something in the saliva that caused it to produce less phosphorus because the manure uh, and the phosphorus content in pig manure is very environmental environmentally damaging, and so they were going to save the earth by putting GM meat on the market for human consumption. And so this Enviropig was going to be the first uh, meat for human consumption likely to be approved on the market, but instead it was totally rejected. Why? Because consumers in Canada called and called and complained and complained and threatened and told them they weren't going to buy this GM pork. And 
they got the message. The pork market in Canada feared that people would avoid the entire swarm, whether it was GM pork or just regular pork, because there's no labeling on GMOs, uh, because there's a big backlash, and they are well aware that the public does not want this stuff. There's a press conference linked in the article I wrote up on Infowars.com, also great reporting at ActivistPost.com, where the Canadian Biotech Action Network describes repeatedly how it was consumer demand that got this project killed. And so the university lost the funding. They put this project on freeze and they're literally gonna freeze these specimens, uh, the semen for these specimens to use in the future uh, because they believe it'll later be acceptable. But for now, it's a partial victory for those who have been opposing GM and for now keeping g genetically modified meat out of the human market. Uh, Dr. Cecil For Forsberg, one of the co-inventors of the EnviroPig, uh, wrote an article or commented in the New York Times complaining that when the pig was first created in 1999, I had the feeling in seven or eight or nine years that the transgenic animals would probably be acceptable, but I was wrong. Uh, it's time to stop the program until, until the rest of the world catches up and it is going to catch up. They vow they'll be back and they're not done with the GMO battle, uh, the long-term war that is, but we have a partial victory in this battle. And what's at stake? Uh, you heard the reports from a couple weeks ago in the Atlantic of how uh, engineering the human body could combat climate change. There's that climate change excuse again, and how they're gonna change our own DNA, give us cat-like eyes so we don't have to have lighting, uh, how they're gonna change our inclinations toward meat to make us more vegan-like, and so we don't have the enjoyment of meat and we won't be allowed to eat meat, and how they're gonna bioengineer us while feeding us with all this genetically modified uh, food crops, whether it's animals, plants, or uh, cross in between, and it's just disgusting how much they think they have a right to change life on Earth in the name of fighting global warming, a total hoax. It's all for authoritarianism. We've covered this at length at InfoWars, but it's all in your face today and this week and in the recent news. Uh, let's just play part of the package I did with Alex last July in 2011 on this growing problem of the uh, genetic Armageddon we are facing if we don't fight this GM issue and rein it in. Let's go to it right now. Biofarming, aiding scientists in cutting edge research. PPL Therapeutics is working on a solution. They want to clone pigs whose organs can be transplanted into people. Cloned and genetically modified cows that can produce milk containing the same health properties as human breast milk. These glow-in-the-dark cats could help develop treatments for diseases, for animals, and for humans. Yes, you did hear that correctly. He has put a spider gene into a goat. Transgenic fish. So the fish actually have what appear to be six-pack abs that we see in humans. My friends, I am here to warn you. I am here to alert you to the greatest threat to our species and our civilization on this planet. Humanity in just the last hundred years has increased its technological and scientific knowledge thousands and thousands of times what it was. But we are still the same species that we were, capable of magnificent heights, but also of horrifying lows. I want to talk to you about the greatest threat to human civilization and society today. Already irrevocably changing the genetic code of the biospheres on this planet, and that is genetic engineering. Now, I love science and technology. I know that it's a neutral thing and that man can use it for good or bad. But that said, the controllers and engineers of our society for more than a hundred years have believed that if they can uh, discover the secrets of life, DNA, that they will have the keys to immortality. And now you see all the different news articles where they openly brag about this and the elite says, we don't need a giant population anymore uh, to run our technological systems. We're now phasing into robotics uh, where the military's aircraft will be drone, 
uh, where combat robots will do the fighting, where manufacturing will be carried on and executed by non-biological systems. So there is a arms race going on and a technological race going on right now dealing with genetic engineering. And recently, uh, the FDA has put into effect new policies that allow genetic engineering companies, uh, predominantly Big Agra, to put on the market any GMO organism they wish without even consulting the public. Now, when you look at this, it's not just GMO grass that takes less water. It's not just GMO tomatoes that last longer on the shelf. And so it's just amazing. If you didn't see that video before, we're going to play it in its entirety at the break. But they're just wildly reckless on purpose, uh, playing with the genetic code of life, opening that Pandora's box, all while telling you you don't have a right to live your natural life because they want that authoritarian control over you, telling you you have to change your lifestyle because of global warming while they threaten to open up the whole works and destroy Earth or si significantly modify. It. It's just crazy. Anyway, uh, today's daily quote also hinges on the way these elitists, these globalists, these environmentalists posing as environmentalists who really could care less about our environment love to control life. You've heard about Eric Pianca. Uh, here he is again. But there's a solution that's theoretically possible. I call it the Johnny Anti Appleseed solution. Instead of being cursed with our fertility, I would bless us with infertility. Now this could happen because male sperm counts are falling because of plastics and the estrogen mimickers naturally. And he goes on to say, we need to sterilize everybody on the earth. The audience laughs, of course. We need to sterilize everybody on the earth and make the antidote freely available to anyone who's willing to work for it. That's Eric Pianca, the evolutionary ecology author, the professor here in town at UT. And it's just disgusting. They want to totally control your entire life cycle. If you don't see that by now, I urge you to research. Go back to our old videos. Anyway, we turn now uh, to just a few of our contest entries. They're still pouring in. I want to remind people you need to follow the rules we've had to reject a few of the entries they're going to revise them and resubmit them so all is not lost uh, but we also need your submissions to all come in by April 30th and we're going to see more and more heated competition here but we've got some great clips we're going to show you on the break not the whole entries because we have those up on the articles uh, if we could pull up this up again, I'll tell people where they can read these articles. InfoWars contest, massive explosion of Patriot reporters. That's one of the pages linking a lot of them. There's also the reporter contest page uh, where they have the previous entries. And we have separately the reporter contest page that has the rules, the guidelines, and the suggestions from Alex and more. A lot of great entries coming in. Of course, uh, a lot of it's male dominated and this contest specifically we're looking for a female reporter as well we've had a few come in i think we're going to see at least one female entry in the break but ladies uh, we want to hear from you we want to hear ladies fighting against tyranny i know you're out there uh, so let's get those submissions in and don't forget we're trying to reach out to new content to new reporters find new talent to grow this broadcast and to grow the overall overall infowars mission but we do rely on your support most of that's getting the word out out, uh, being morally behind us, us all banding together in the name of truth in an age of universal deceit. But part of it is funding. Part of it is supporting PrisonPlanet.tv. You can become a subscriber, support the InfoWars Nightly News that way. You can also use that as a tool to share it with your friends, your families, perfect strangers, whomever. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, synergy that we can achieve here through things like this contest and through generally getting the word out. So I hope you'll think about that and stay tuned on this break. We have a lot of interesting stuff, very informative. It's going to be a longer than usual break, though. And we'll be back with Sheriff. Richard Mack, and we'll be back again tomorrow and next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Dykes. Hi, folks. Stan Badania, Truth Radio here. We're standing here in Providence, Rhode Island, on South Main Street. It's March 17th of 2012, and what you just witnessed is a Korean War memorial uh, honor to the veterans that served our country. Now, however, within those arraignments of flags, you've seen a United Nations flag and standing behind me is about a 20-foot-tall statue of all guns. 
and this is called United Nations propaganda, folks. The UN is openly calling to dissolve our Second Amendment of the Constitution. And how contrary to the war memorial, those men who fought and died for our country, and they hang a disgusting trash bag called the United Nations flag up there. This here symbolizes everything against what our Constitution stands for. This here is a call to the summit of the American people, folks. And it's the Second Amendment of the Constitution, a well-regulated militia being necessary to keep the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, you know what, folks, it's being infringed here and now, the province of Rhode Island, one of many cities here in the United States. Hello, Alan Moore reporting for InfoWars.com. I have a breaking story on this March 31st, 2012, Friday edition of USA Today has a mugshot of John Joe Gray on the front of it, and it says that if y'all come to get me, bring body bags. Texas standoff is emblematic of nation's growing anti-government sovereign movement. The article goes into how he was arrested, then released on bond, then he run off into this 50-acre ranch that he has with a bunch of people, and he's been held up there for 10 years. The police are afraid to go get him because they're worried about some type of bloodbath or another Waco type of incident. When you start looking at this article and really getting into it, you can see that this is the card that they like to play. This is the card that they are dealing out right now to start demonizing the Liberty Movement and the Patriot Movement. It's time for that card because the fire of liberty is burning in the hearts and minds of the American people and they are waking up and they see through the lies and disinformation. They invoke images in here of Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma City and you know don't even get me started on Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma City because I'll start I only have a limited amount of time and I'll start talking about how they have eyewitnesses of people planting explosives in the sub parking structure down there putting putty on the walls with wires I'll start talking about how Terrence Yankee was murdered after exposing all this information and it was ruled a suicide or I'll start talking about how Timothy McVeigh was a noted and proven government informant and asset and was used to set up this false flag movement to demonize the Liberty Movement. I'll start talking about that. And they, they want to talk about Waco. And they had the nerve in this obvious kit piece to call Waco a botched raid. A botched raid. A botched raid where they set fires to the building, come in with tanks, with special forces, Delta Force, behind the tanks, spouting out over an intercom, please come out and surrender with your hands up. People come walking out because they don't want to get burned and they were shooting them as they walked out. They have the nerve to call that a botched raid. Yeah. I just finished watching a video that Alex Jones posted on YouTube earlier this morning. And the video is entitled, Obama to push gun ban in name of Trayvon. In the video, Alex talks about how the White House is basically exploiting the death of this young man in order to push their gun control agenda. Biden has cited the Trevon shooting as yet another reason to pass more stringent gun laws and regulations. The NRA has reported that in a second term, Obama would push for a ban on all semi-automatic weapons. But it's got to make you wonder now, with the whole Trevon thing being a hot, hot topic in the news the last week or so, will Obama push for such a ban even sooner than a possible re-election? Well, let's hope not. Alex did say in his video, though, the, from this morning, that we may be able to back them off if we just expose this issue. There are some differences of opinion as to how many signatures there actually were. The headline reads, the FDA finally responds to GMO labeling campaign, but differs on number of supporters. Sue McGovern of Just Label It stated that when they send the information to the FDA, they have been asked to send it as a PDF file. And say that that PDF file has 10,000 signatures on it, the FDA counts it in their docket as one. So the FDA's official number is 394 and of course due to legal obligations they had to respond to the petition after a certain amount of time and their response was <clears throat> we'll get back to you so once again folks it is a slap in the face of 
the political system disrespecting us and showing us that the globalists are in control. Most of us have fond memories of time spent in our grandparents' houses and even the homes that we grew up in. Yet most of us end up finding ourselves here at the apartment complex. The average American does see the diminishing middle class, but when you ask them why, that's where they get quiet. Do you feel that the American standard of living has diminished? Presidential candidate Ron Paul has rightfully gained much positive recognition due to his anti-war sentiment, push to end the Federal Reserve, resistance to Israeli influence, and overall pro-constitution stance. People tell me all the time, if only the mainstream media wasn't corrupt and full of brainwashing, there's no doubt that Dr. Ron Paul would be our next president. While there is an element of truth to this statement, it would be naive to assume that any elected president has the ability to change the system in its current form. The influence of the globalist agenda is so deeply embedded in our society that it stretches far beyond the political sphere alone. Media, science, healthcare, and even our education system is engineered and run by the same people who elect presidents and make sure that these presidents abide by their imperialist agenda at all costs. Every election cycle, they sell us false hopes and the idea that by voting in the very same system designed to suppress us, we somehow have a voice and the ability to control our own destiny. This, of course, is far from the truth, and it is in no way in our interest to have the globalists selling us the idea of change we can believe in. Yes, we can. We've been lied to so many times that we don't need change we can believe in, but change we can see right in front of our eyes. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in, in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are gonna be on the radio, whose reports are gonna be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you.
All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your metal. Welcome to the pioneering new world of farming pharmaceuticals. Biofarming, aiding scientists in cutting edge research. PPL Therapeutics is working on a solution. They want to clone pigs whose organs can be transplanted into people. Cloned and genetically modified cows that can produce milk containing the same health properties as human breast milk. These glow-in-the-dark cats could help develop treatments for diseases, for animals, and for humans. Yes, you did hear that correctly. He has put a spider gene into a goat. Transgenic fish. So the fish actually have what appear to be six-pack abs that we see in humans. My friends, I am here to warn you. I am here to alert you to the greatest threat to our species and our civilization on this planet. Humanity in just the last hundred years has increased its technological and scientific knowledge thousands and thousands of times what it was. But we are still the same species that we were, capable of magnificent heights, but also of horrifying lows. I wanna to talk to you about the greatest threat to human civilization and society today. Already irrevocably changing the genetic code of the biospheres on this planet. And that is genetic engineering. Now, I love science and technology. I know that it's a neutral thing and that man can use it for good or bad. But that said, the controllers and engineers of our society for more than a hundred years have believed that if they can uh, discover the secrets of life, DNA, that they will have the keys to immortality. And now you see all the different news articles where they openly brag about this and the elite says, we don't need a giant population anymore uh, to run our technological systems. We're now phasing into robotics uh, where the military's aircraft will be drone, uh, where combat robots will do the fighting, where manufacturing will be carried on and executed by non-biological systems. So there is a arms race going on and a technological race going on right now dealing with genetic engineering. And recently, uh, the FDA has put into effect new policies that allow genetic engineering companies, a predominantly big agra, to put on the market any GMO organism they wish without even consulting the public. Now, when you look at this, it's not just GMO grass that takes less water. It's not just GMO tomatoes that last longer on the shelf. Every genetic engineer I've talked to who worked at these large companies said that in the different studies of GMO potatoes, uh, rice, you name it, that there would be the side effect of reducing fertility in the rodents, the rats, the mice, the guinea pigs that they tested it on. Those that ate the genetically engineered soy, they didn't actually show the problems in the first generation. 
The second generation was slower growth, slower onset for maturity, but by the third generation, that's when nearly all of the adults had lost the ability to have babies. And then later in uh, primate studies with monkeys and apes, the same thing happened. And that uh, along with the public trait that these organisms are being engineered for, there are other traits quietly being built in as a Trojan horse uh, that cause biological changes in the body, that increase cancer, that reduce fertility. And these developments are a lot further along than the public has even been told. The information is available, but it's not an issue that gets a lot of media play. And even when I have the news articles and cover them on air, I get emails and phone calls saying I'm a liar. I'll never forget years ago covering news articles about spider goats, part spider, part goat, to produce body armor uh, in their udders, uh, in their mammary glands that can then be used uh, as an industrial product, a special component. This is the very life force of the planet, the very building blocks of the planet uh, being scrambled together. And people would call me and couldn't believe it. Uh, even today, uh, I see news articles about spider goats and salmon that are been mixed with other insects and fish uh, that will, within 40 generations, uh, extinct the natural salmon that are in the ocean, according to university studies. And people just seem to not care. We are being fed this stuff. GMO crops have been infecting other crops, but also uh, other plants that are growing naturally and haven't been developed through hybridization. When there's a nuclear disaster, it increases cancer, it causes a lot of illnesses, but it tends to dissipate over time. But with genetically engineered and altered organisms, it doesn't go away. It, it mixes with other species. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. What is the greatest threat to our species? It is unchecked, out of control, genetic engineering being carried out by thousands of companies in tens of thousands of laboratories across the world. I remember seven or eight years ago seeing in the Washington Post just a footnote in an article in their science section where they admitted that in Costa Rica, there is widespread human-animal clones being made. And yes, my friends, you heard me right. In fact, if you go back to the BBC News articles from more than a decade ago, they admitted that they weren't just cloning humans, that they were splicing them, in one case, with cow genetics, bovine genetics, so that the cow would not reject the human fetus growing inside of its uterus. Now, why are they doing this? They are growing the fetuses up to close to term, uh, reportedly, and this is what we know about, so that their organs can be harvested. You have your clone produced with cow genetics in it so that uh, your clone can be grown in a cow nearing the time that you need the liver transplant or kidney transplant or blood transfusions, whatever the case is, and then your clone is harvested from the womb of the cow or the artificial wombs that they've been developing and harvested um, so that you can have an extended life. And the issue here is we need to have a debate about this. People see this as science fiction because in movies back in the 50s and 60s and 70s or in the island of Dr. Maru, uh, this was written about many decades before that. And so people have been preconditioned that this is fantasy and that this doesn't exist. This is very real. And I thought that I would uh, raise this issue again because over the weekend I saw in the news of Australia human-animal hybrids created amid Frankenstein warnings. Scientists in the UK have reportedly created more than 150 human-animal hybrid embryos in controversial secretive lab experiments that spread over three years. And there's another report here out of the Daily Mail uh, who also reported uh, on this issue. A lot of things concern me and hopefully concern you with all of this, but one issue is the media. Every time I've seen this reported in the last 15 years, 
it's always the first time it's being reported, and they always say it's been going on for three to five years. Well, the first time I saw this confirmed that human clones had been created, but terminated before term, before they were born, was in the BBC, 95, 96. You can pull it up. I saw it again in 97, 98, 99. I've seen it in scientific publications. And in China, they have totally embraced this system. They're not only creating human animal clones that resemble humans, they've also created cows that are part human and create human breast milk in their udders. In the last hundred years, governments began working on bioweapons, the Imperial Japanese, the Germans, England, the United States, France, many other governments. And they always centered in and around race-specific bioweapons that would wipe out a certain, uh, quote, race of people, whether it was blacks, Arabs, Jews, governments have worked on them all. The problem in this research is they find that humans are so interconnected and share our genetics across the board that this is unfeasible until now. Now, the number one danger here is that governments, when they began to work on bioweapons, first tried to take zoological bioweapons like Ebola that affected apes and monkeys and cross it over to humans. And there's evidence that that's what's happened with Ebola. Now governments, in the name of defense, are working on airborne Ebola that will kill 99% of us that it comes in contact with. Then you discover that the ruling elite are obsessed with world government being a mechanism to carry out the orderly extermination of the global population. We cover that in my seminal film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, free here on the web at YouTube. At least for now, we're being censored more and more. Please get that film, get out to everyone you know. So you've got insects, animal genes, reptile genes being engineered into fish and being released open water. You've got human cross-species clones growing inside of cows so they can harvest the organs. Ladies and gentlemen, they talk about animal rights. What about human rights? They're mixing plant and animal with human. And this will allow cross-species diseases to spread easier into populations. It will give rise to mutant viruses and other uh, mutagenic uh, microorganisms that could create plagues, the likes of which this earth has never seen. And there are thousands of different laboratories across the world working on these systems. We're already seeing clear evidence that genetically engineered crops are what's causing all of these incredible allergies. It's what's destroying our immune systems. More and more governments are moving to not even let the public know when they're eating GMO food. They're coming out with cloned beef, cloned chicken, cloned fish, but not just cloned, cross species. When you read the industry publications of these biotech companies bragging about the part human, part animal creatures they're creating, they say that it was essential from the beginning that they do this so that the clones not have rights when they mix chimpanzee with a human embryo and play God, they then claim that these poor creatures they've created have no rights. And listen to me carefully here. If this has been going on for 15 years and is now only being introduced to the public, can you imagine what's been going on in secret in government laboratories and private corporate laboratories across the planet? That's why the global engineers are so arrogant. They have been playing God for a long time. They are taking the successes from their research and shelving it under national security for themselves. If humanity survives, when the history of this time is written, our progeny will marvel that we ever survived and they will marvel at the unmitigated recklessness of the ruling class and what they're doing. The rates of cancers and diabetes have doubled in the last decade. We are being tested upon. This is such a nightmare by these psychopathic technocrats. The same government and corporate institutions that are caught worldwide giving children live polio and syphilis shots. The same people caught funding forced abortions in China. They are engaged in this mad testing in a race for the fountain of youth while they endanger the entire species and the planet in the process. 
This is the threat, not fake terrorism, not mass shootings, not all of these diversions that they use to sell us on having government take over our lives. The threat is this globalist banking cartel in control of the scientific method and almost all research funds on the planet playing God. This makes nuclear weapons look like child's play. And the psychopathic ruling class is selling all of this as inevitable. You will be assimilated by the Borg, basically. The transhumanism set up by the eugenicist Aldous Huxley is the way to go and that they're just going to do this and it doesn't matter. They have thrown it in our face and we're not even having a debate or a discussion about it. We are being poisoned and manipulated to the food and the water. It is admitted we are under attack. There is a revolution against free humanity through the eugenicist mindset of the globalist. I'm Alex Jones reporting from the front lines of the info war. You have been warned. Now please warn others. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information. I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. Hello, my fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here, introducing you to the Pro Pure family of gravity fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic. And one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels, these poisons are gravity fed filters. And Pro Pure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch, is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalists obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure gravity filter system. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%.
It's the latest generation, years in development. ProPure is the name. And we are back from break. We are joined now by one of our favorite guests, Sheriff Richard Mack. He's the author of many books, including his latest, The Magic of Gun Control. Sheriff, thanks very much for joining us today. You bet. Thanks for having me. It's a great day for freedom, isn't it? And you're, of course, uh, in your ongoing movement to educate people on something radical, the Constitution of the United States, uh, particularly sheriff and law enforcement people at the state and local level. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I believe that uh, if we get local officials, especially sheriffs, to uh, just do the simple thing of keeping your oath and making sure that uh, the Second Amendment, along with all the other Bill of Rights, is uh, safeguarded uh, from the clutches of uh, corrupt politicians and bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., that will take our country back and do, as a lot of people have said, make the federal government irrelevant in our lives. Well, of course, as you know, one of the major topics, one of the ongoing targets has always been the Second Amendment, and there's so many things going on on those grounds. Uh, it's, of course, the issue you took all the way to the Supreme Court when you were sheriff of Graham County in Arizona. And today, in our current context, we see outrage over the Trayvon shooting that's become a, a really an overblown national issue. And then we have figures like Vice President Joe Biden, Eric Holder, others uh, really trying to challenge Florida's standing your ground issue. Uh, what, what is your take on that, and, and what does it mean for the larger battle for the Second Amendment? Well, uh, every incident uh, where a gun is used, uh, except when it's used, and this is uh, something I point out in the book, uh, when a former beauty queen uses a gun to kill a would-be attacker, in fact, he did attack her and her boyfriend in, inside her home, that's all mentioned in the book, when uh, Rebecca Griffin uh, shot and killed an intruder in her home in Washington, D.C., uh, which saved her life uh, and her daughter's life. We don't see anything about it, but when there's these um, shootings like the Trayvon Martin thing, of course, and the Gabby Gifford shooting, uh, then the media is going to all harp on it to make sure that we follow these Hitleric uh, gun control uh, laws and they all want to scream for more gun control and make each of us an easier target for criminals and, and government thugs. So the, the whole thing on the, the Trayvon Martin shooting uh, is first and foremost what I said from the very beginning. Uh, let the police do the investigation and everybody else needs to shut up. Uh, this, is, this is a hard enough crime to, to uh, solve. It's a hard enough investigation to solve without everybody breathing down the necks of the investigators. And uh, I've seen these things happen before, uh, whether they're police shootings or citizen shootings. Uh, citizens definitely have the right to defend themselves, and we're trying to make that illegal in America. So, of course, the media and uh, all these others harp all over it. But where I'm really disappointed in this whole thing, and, sh and not shocked or surprised by the hypocrisy or the lack of uh, justice from our nation's Justice Department, when you have Black Panthers committing crimes about this issue and issuing a bounty, putting a hit, offering a bounty on Zimmerman, and of course Spike Lee uh, giving out false information, endangering these people and putting their lives at risk, these things are crimes, and the, the Black Panthers have already committed numerous crimes in our country. We already have it where uh, it's on videotape where they were threatening to kill elderly white people for going in to vote uh, in um, November of 2008. Uh, of course, they get a free ride on that. The Obama administration, their Holder and Justice Department do nothing about these crimes, and now they put a bounty out or... Uh, a reward for somebody to uh, kill or go after uh, Zimmerman. And uh, this is absolutely unheard of in American uh, jurisprudence. And yet we continue to allow uh, supporters of Obama to commit these types of crimes. And uh, the local sheriff there in Florida or wherever the, the – uh, threat came from from the Black Panthers should be investigating the Black Panthers should be going after them. It is a federal crime what they did, and 
it's just absolutely astonishing to me that we continue to allow these crimes to occur in America. And, and Sheriff Mack, what does this case mean to you in terms of there's an election coming up in six months? People are trying to play this issue for political points on all fronts, not only the Second Amendment, but just to rile people up uh, in time for election politicking. Well, it is, and and uh, it's really sad uh, that we're using uh, a shooting of this uh, nature uh, for political gain. And these politicians just have absolutely no shame. Uh, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and their ilk have no shame whatsoever. I really have appreciated the the uh, leadership from the black community where they said, why don't we just wait? Instead of forming a lynch mob, why don't we just wait and and let the police do their investigation? And, and to to form this lynch mob that some of them have done, uh, I thought we were against that sort of thing. You know, I'm against it and always have been, uh, what, no matter what group it was aimed at, no matter what person it was aimed at. If Zimmerman did something wrong, fine. Uh, let's give him his day in court, just like every other citizen in this country deserves. Uh, if the investigation exonerates him, then that too we must uh, put up with and uh, pull in our uh, – uh, hanging ropes and go about our lives. And uh, if this had been a white person, would we be uh, that got shot? Would we be hearing anything about it? Uh, you know, this thing needs to be addressed, and uh, we all need to calm down, take a deep breath, step back, and let the investigators do their job. Well, sure, I agree. And there's another case, too, that certainly did not make Trayvon-level headlines, uh, but American Free Press put out the story this week. Country rises up in support for New Hampshire man and Second Amendment rights. Uh, his home was apparently broken into, and he tracked down uh, what turned out to be a serial burglar who was trying to satisfy a drug habit. Uh, fired one shot into the ground and led to the apprehension of the man. And uh, although he was basically a hero, the system reacted by taking his guns away and trying to charge him with a reckless conduct felony charge. Uh, however, a lot of people <laughs> did react to this, and he got his guns back because there was such a backlash towards this attempt to move against guns. Yeah, I, I saw that, and uh, I, I'm really amazed that he had enough restraint uh, to just give a warning shot into the ground. Uh, in law enforcement, they teach us never to do that. Uh, sometimes it pays off. I mean, usually just brandishing a weapon will bring a tense situation to a complete halt. And uh, that's why uh, I totally support uh, people uh, keeping and bearing arms and defending themselves. All, usually all you have to do to stop somebody in their tracks is it show them that you have a 12-gauge a, uh, shotgun. Uh, let them hear the, the racking of the round into the chamber. That's the most calming sound in the world, <laughs> and it will stop a lot of crime. And this, I, this is another indication of the New Hampshire man. Um, simply I had to fire it into the ground, and uh, everything stopped, and the suspect was apprehended. Uh, the good guys went home. The bad guy went to jail. And that's what this is all about. Sometimes and, an armed society is a polite society, as they say. Well, it is. And that's why I say you, you, all you have to do is show the gun and people get polite real quick. <laughs> Uh, Sheriff, we have so much to cover today. I know you are from Arizona. That's where you were sheriff. Uh, there's so much going on there between people like Sheriff Joe Arpaio and the Obama administration, almost to the level of a feud. Uh, we've yes. got the ongoing Fast and Furious investigation, uh, which in many respects was a false flag against the Second Amendment. We've got all this ongoing debate over illegal immigration, what to do about it, who's allowed to do something about it. Uh, and then meanwhile, we've got Sheriff Arpaio investigating Obama, saying his documents look fraudulent according to their investigation. You've got the Obama administration trying to sue Arpaio for his response to illegal immigration. Uh, what's going on here and what direction is it going? Well, I, I really wished Obama had consulted with me before he went after Joe Arpaio, and I would have told him, there's a few people in this country you don't want to go after, and Joe Arpaio is definitely one of them. Joe Arpaio is not going to back down. 
Uh, he doesn't care who the criminal is. He doesn't care if it's the president of the United States. Uh, 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 200 of his constituents asked him to investigate this. He investigated it. He didn't, he didn't go, uh, he wasn't uh, hunting for, for uh, he wasn't witch hunting. He wasn't hunting for some way to bring down the president. Uh, he, he said, he told me in person that uh, if he uh, found that uh, Barack Obama is definitely a citizen and everything's in order and all his uh, paperwork is in order and that his uh, birth certificate w wasn't really fraudulent, he'd be a hero of the Democrats. If he finds out that he's not, then he's a hero to the Republicans or to the conservatives or to the Tea Party group. He wins either way. He does not have an axe to grind against the president. He simply does, is doing his job as a sheriff of Arizona where citizens brought him some uh, reasonable suspicion and probable cause to investigate a crime uh, by the commander-in-chief. And yes, uh, now... Uh, with a very solid investigation, our PIO has loads and loads of evidence that there is uh, something going wrong in Washington, D.C. And uh, this would be the first time in my law enforcement career where we were supposed to ignore this because the suspect in the case said, look, here's the evidence that I'm clean. There's no problem. There's no crime. We're all supposed to believe the suspect. Well, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that's not how crime goes, and that's not how law enforcement goes. Sheriff Arpaio investigated it. Now they want to sue him even for this, and they're trying to muzzle this, this great American sheriff, and it's just not going to happen. Well, that's the thing. It's not as if uh, the Republican candidates from Mitt Romney on down are going to be any better. But if the country lets slide documents uh, that are supposed to prove eligibility for office and they don't pass muster, uh, that's letting a lot of things slip away, constitutional and otherwise, in our once great republic. Well, it is. And, and we need to uh, uh, enforce the rule of law. We need to enforce the Constitution. There are reasons the Founding Fathers put that in the Constitution, that you have to be born in America to be uh, qualified to run for president. And there's a legitimate reason, because the Founding Fathers didn't want your loyalties divided between your homeland and this country. And it's very legitimate. Uh, I never really thought this was a key issue until uh, Sheriff Arpaio conducted the investigation. I have said this all along that if, if someone would just simply conduct a thorough investigation of it, we could put this to rest. Now, everybody ignores, ignores uh, the evidence, and we're not, still not able to put it to rest. Uh, I'm amazed that Pravda from Russia has paid more attention to this issue and this criminal investigation by Sheriff Arpaio than the lamestream media has here in America. Well, you notice Jerome Corsi's investigation, when it was John Kerry he was writing about in 2004, everyone paid attention to it until the issue uh, was thoroughly vetted and it was shown that, you know, uh, things weren't what they seemed. But this uh, re seems to refuse to become a national issue. Well, uh, like I said before, I've said it on your show before, if uh, the media support you on anything, uh, you can get away with anything. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what uh, Barack Obama has done. Uh, they did it with Clinton. Uh, Clinton got away with murder and, uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, here Barack Obama is uh, because he's a little darling, and Chris Matthews gets a tingle up his leg when he hears the name of Barack Obama. Uh, I don't care. I don't care who they are. I didn't when I was sheriff. It, it is not a matter of who. It's a matter of what. If you break the law, you deserve to be prosecuted and investigated, and that's all our pile's doing. He, he's a man of his word. He has high police and law enforcement credentials and standards, and uh, he's simply doing an investigation that he was asked to do by his constituents. Sure. And what do you see is going on in the larger picture in Arizona with Fast and Furious and the fight over immigration? Well, they're, they're all kind of related, and the... The horrible thing with the uh, Fast and Furious is that uh, the federal government, the, the BATF included, uh, really caused this and, and created uh, up to dozen crimes 
in the process of getting these guns down to the cartels in Mexico. And the crime scene where uh, Agent Brian Terry was murdered uh, using some of these guns and cartel members uh, using these guns that were uh, transferred down to Mexico by our own government, which broke uh, I don't know how many different laws, but in, in so doing, uh, three of the suspects were all released. And again, the Obama administration uh, being very suspicious uh, in, in covering up crimes because there, there, there is no question that this entire botched operation was done so that uh, Barack Obama could promote more gun control uh, in America by blaming these crimes and these, the infiltration of these weapons into Mexico on gun shops in southern Arizona. Uh, it blew up in his face, and so they tried to cover their tracks as best they could. They transferred Melson, who was the director of the BATF, to some other cush job, didn't fire him, didn't prosecute him, uh, moved him around. This was so that they can keep him quiet. And uh, this is some of the, the worst crimes ever committed by our government and, uh, and especially by a president. Uh, this is worse than Nixon. Nixon tried to cover up a, a burglary uh, between the Democrats and the Republicans. Who cares? Nobody was murdered in this situation. Several have been murdered. Hundreds of citizens of Mexico have been murdered with these weapons that our own government in, uh, uh, transferred into Mexico. It's just amazing to me the level of uh, interweaved action between the Attorney General and uh, Homeland Security, the Obama administration, all on these issues uh, that seem to reside around Arizona. I find it very strange. Well, Arizona's been standing and trying to make the federal government uh, do its job. Uh, they also want to make the federal government more irrelevant and inconsequential in our lives. And that just gets the federal government really mad and jealous. And, you know, they want to they want to get mad and throw their popsicle in the dirt and, and run home crying. And uh, when, when the worst thing you can do to the federal government is prove to the American people that we don't need them. And that's exactly what Arizona has been showing. And uh, that really gets the, the bureaucrats in Washington very agitated. agitated. And, and I would say the criminals in Washington, it gets them very agitated. Well, in closing, Sheriff, uh, tell us about your ongoing work uh, in educating sheriffs and your run for Congress here in Texas. Well, anybody that wants to see about the race uh, and wants to help, uh, please go to SheriffMacForCongress.com. Sheriff Mac for congress.com. Uh, I need all the help I can get there, but I'll tell you what, uh, the, the thing that I'm most excited about is the Constitutional Sheriff and Peace Officer Association, CSPOA.org. Go to that site too. Uh, that's the answer for taking America back. And we have a lot of good sheriffs really standing up. We just spent the weekend with some sheriffs in California. Uh, we did some other work in Philadelphia before that. And uh, this thing's really starting to take off. We're, we're loving the support and the grassroots support we're getting from the American people. So everybody listening to your program right now, go to CSPOA.org and get involved with this great movement to make constitutional sheriffs nationwide. COSP.org and SheriffMac.com. Uh, Sheriff, we appreciate you joining us once again, and I'm sure we'll speak to you in the near future. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. My best, Alex. Take care. Of course. And that's it for tonight's Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow. Darren McBreen will bring you a number of special reports and carefully crafted packages. And we'll, of course, be back next week with all the breaking news. Keep fighting and never give in to tyranny. I'm Aaron Dykes for the InfoWars Nightly News.